honestly just trying to get better at the just that tank and uh, Overwatch in general. Okay, how long have you been playing? <clears throat> since really since when Overwatch one release. <clears throat> okay. And you why tank? How long have you been playing tank? Because I'm looking at the tanks that you're playing, and, the, and they're generally more like the Overwatch 2 variants. So have you always been a tank player, or is that a new evolution? Honestly, I've just always played tank, but those tanks in the form are just like, I feel like my most comfortable and strongest picks. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Do you enjoy playing those tanks the most, or, or is it just more of the comfort thing, and that's what lines up with the strengths, or what? I honestly just like playing the tanks, but I can usually just flex around and play low. Uh, what my team needs really okay okay so you prefer to play queen doom sigma but you can flex and play depending on the situation all righty here uh what i hope to game out at the session is to see growth because i feel stagnant i feel some games i play well other games i'm throwing and i just feel lost and confused and not knowing what to do in certain situations your current rank is diamond but i peaked at one point on gm uh okay queen doom sigma all righty I play for around two to three hours per day. I play around four to nine hours per week or slightly more. Okay, so in other words, you play around three to four days per week? Yeah, but okay. actually, um, I recently got back into Masters through, and I'm almost like oh. Masters 4. Nice, congrats, congrats. That's that's well done, that's well done. Now, question for you, <clears throat> goal-wise, is you said short-term goals get back into Masters and fix the problems that plague my gameplay. Uh, also defining the routine that is good for growth. So when you say routine, you talked about like kind of where you are right now with routine. Where do you think that your routine should be? What would you like to improve your routine to? What is, do you think optimal? I think more optimal is like, I kind of have a routine, but I just like struggle to stay consistent with it. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. What's, uh, where does your consistency struggle? What are some of those routines that you've aimed for and then failed with? So I usually try to, like, get on and play, like, Kovacs for, like, a little bit, for, like, five minutes or so, yeah. and then play, like, a quick play match, and then hop in a ring. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, and then you said you were unable to keep the consistency with it? Yeah, because sometimes, you know, I'd like, after school, I'd be, like, burnt out a bit, so I don't feel like playing or, like, stuff to do, like, school okay. and stuff. Okay, and so then do you just not play at all, or do you play like an abbreviated version, or what? How does that generally go? Yeah, I usually play abbreviated. I don't really like play Kovacs. I usually just play like a quick play match and hop in the rank. Or if, especially if my friends are on, they don't like to like warm up, so I just hop in the rank. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and then do you? How do you play with friends? How often do you play with friends? Majority of time, majority of the time, but I mostly sad but i'm i mostly smurf with them because i'm you know wide match and stuff ah uh, okay 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 uh so you don't stack with your friends on your actual rank you go in another account that's lower ranked yes because um they're like implied diamondish elo okay where are you at right now so masters i mean and you have you tried the wide queue with your normal account it's also because there's like four of us because with the wide match you can't have like more than four people to wide match. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. Um, hmm. Longer term goal is to get back into Grandmaster and probably find a team to scrim with. So, so here, here's where we're at right now. So I'm glad that you're aware or trying to improve your routine, but it does, cause it does feel a little bit like your routine is one of the lower hanging fruits for you to improve from where you're at right now. Because it feels like a little bit of struggle with inconsistency, playing a lot with friends, playing a lot with friends on a Smurf, not necessarily consistently like warming up, not playing a whole lot of days. And then even sometimes like, do you have your career profile pulled up right now? Yeah. Could you send me a, can you say, I don't know if you can send screenshots on console. If not, can you read it out to me? What do you, you want me to screenshot? What do you want uh, to be this season and the last season's playtime, like the the heroes that you played? All right. It's just going to take me a while because uh, that, I got to okay. the That's okay.
All right. Um, I sent the images. Off. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is kind of like what what I was talking about. So like, obviously, you probably this is not the main account that you play on. I assume you play more on the Smurf. No, this this is the main, but uh, I don't have the I well, have the switch accounts to get the Smurf. Right. But which which account do you play more on? This one or the other one? When it comes to competitive? Uh, this one. This one. So like, it's kind of. This is a little bit of what we talked about, where it, it you don't have a lot of hours right now, on even on tank, right? What is that like thirty games or a little bit less than thirty games, I believe. And then the other problem here as well is, I mean, you got the you got the hero spectrum rainbow going on here, right? Like you got significant hours and or significant time rather on Diva, Arissa, Queen, Hog, Maga, Sigma, Zarya, even sometimes in Ramatra, and I'm sure maybe one other two other tanks as well. This is not conducive to improvement. Uh, certainly not efficient improvement. So I think, yeah, then and so on, right? So season nine here, let's take a look at this one. Ram, Diva, Rissa, Junker, Queen, Doomfist, Sigma, Zarya, Ruhog, and so on. Uh, my recommendation for you is we really need to take a, a closer look at what you're doing in terms of training schedule. And you've said that you've had a hard time sticking with the schedule. So I don't just want to like make the same mistake that we made before. If you schedule that you're never going to stick with and then just flop right all over again. I would really, 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 really like to find something, a small adjustment with how you're playing and something that you can actually stick with. Let me throw problems your way and you tell me which one stands out as being fixable to you. Number one, so a little bit more solo queue would be great. Number two, shrinking your hero pool, at least from season to season. Like you can change, if, if you get a hero who gets buffed or nerfed and you don't like playing the character anymore, you can drop it and play something else. But if, for the entire season, you don't want to be playing that many characters. Number three, you probably need to be playing a little bit more ranked. I'm not sure how much ranked you're playing per week. And number four, you probably need to be playing, spreading out your playtime on more days, not necessarily playing all in one day, but spreading out more on more days. Does that all make sense? Yeah. At least for your goals. The question is, is that, and I, you're not going to be able to do all three or all four of those things at once. Certainly not. So what feels the easiest? What feels the most con, most reachable? What what do you feel are most motivated to change? What stands out to you right now? Any thoughts? Solo queuing is probably the easiest one to apply, but... um. But would you have fun? You know, because you, you, you described like you play a lot of rank with your friends. Would you... Would you want this? Yeah, it would probably be like less enjoyable. Yeah. Right. So like that's the thing you got to ask because y- your motivation is obviously heavily correlated with how much fun you're having. <laughs> so, okay. What do you think? Hmm. Wait, what was this? Uh, the other two? It's I your hero pool. Hero pool and then playing more and playing on more days. Probably, yeah, shrinking my hero pool probably the most effective, I guess. Okay, okay. So how far would you shrink your hero pool? Probably Cause like... Because right now, because like, let's compare, let's look at the season nine numbers because that's probably going to be closer to like what's going to be in season 10 once you actually get some hours in. And I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six tanks, three, three hours plus, seven. Like what, what, what can you shrink it down to? Probably like, three yeah three three works for me three works great which three would you think which three do you have that you enjoy playing the most what do you think um like doom queen and um like ram but queen and doom i mean queen and ram are like the same archetype of tank yeah but there's situations where queen might be better versus different comps like let's say they go uh, let's say they go like Arissa. You might have an easier time playing Ram into that than Queen, right? Something to keep in mind. I would say Doom, Queen, and Ram is probably a fine comp. You have high ground mobility. You have short range tank. You have another short range tank that's slightly different and better versus different characters. Does that seem reasonable for you? Yeah. Okay. So let's do that right now. Shrink. Hero pull to Doom, Queen, Ram, and try to stick with just those tanks when swapping. Okay. 
Let's see how you can do with that. Any other adjustments, small adjustments that you can make in your schedule or how you're playing? And probably like spreading out the more, like playing more out through the loop. Probably easier. Price spreading more play time through the week. What's the way to do that? Give me something concrete. Is it 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one more day a week? What is it? Probably like one more day a week. Okay. Aim for one more day for how long? Can I like say it in like I'm out of games? Yeah, sure. Probably like an extra like two or three more games. Two or three games. And you ready for this? That is it. That's all. Now you could go through that and maybe experiment with solo queuing, maybe experiment with playing more and so on. But like, the, the, I wouldn't really worry about that right now. This is a significant improvement, especially over the course of a couple of months. Let's see how that goes over the course of the next few months and see if you still enjoy playing the game or if, or if these are not fun or, or if they're fine and everything's going great. Just try it and see. That work for you? Yeah. Okay. Any questions so far? No. And this is the funny thing is like as boring as all this has been, those two changes right here are probably more important than anything we're going to talk about in the rest of this review period in terms of you ranking up. I can tell you right now. Okay. Uh, let's see here. What do you feel is holding you back from improving? I think many things that are holding me back is my mentality. Also, okay. So when you say mentality, what, what specifically is wrong or feels off? I think what feels off is like, I guess I feel, I get tilted. Not like hard to, but like I get like slightly aggravated and I feel like I start to play off by that. Okay. Okay. What, what kind of stuff tilts you and how are you affected? Like when you say you play like, off, what, what happens? Like I start like making like irrational like decisions or like going like over aggressive, I guess, by sure. like their team is like hard counter picking me and it's like very frustrating. Ah, 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 okay, okay. So when you get counterpicked, there's like frustration and that reflects in your gameplay. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, anything else tilt you? Because that's a, that's a good one. And just most, like most of the time, I feel like I don't, I don't try to blame my teammates as much. I just, just focus on myself. But yep. knowing when I see... No, not trying to compare the stats a lot, but yeah, I, I see my teammates going like two and seven or something. It's like, yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're two and seven, something's wrong for sure. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I mean, it, the easy thing is that like, you know, people are bad. People are going to have bad games. Matchmaker is going to put you in a lobby with a plat player on both teams and the plat players in both sides on the enemy team and on your team are going to play badly. That's just how it is. And like you said, the only thing you can do is just focus on yourself and, and, and be specific with what you're focusing on too, not just saying, oh, I'm going to focus on myself. Well, what are you focusing on? And if you don't know the answer to that question, then that's going to be what's distracting you. Now, let's talk a little bit about the counters really quick though. So I, I'm i I'm with you on this one. I, I played a quick play game yesterday because I was trying to get the um, a death tip to show up. You know how like you respawn and there'll be like a tip on the side of your screen sometimes? I was trying to get those to show up for a video idea I've been working on. And I couldn't get it done. But anyway, long story short, this was just a, a casual quick play game. And it was like relatively competitive. And on Numbani, the enemy team goes like Roadhog. I was on Winston. They lost one fight. Then they went Roadhog, Reaper, Bastion. <laughs> and I'm like, guys, come on. <laughs> like, yeah, that's just the cringiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Now it was Noombani, so I was fine. We ended up dumb stringing them and shockingly their DPS did really badly because they were just chasing me around the map and, and doing nothing. Um, but it, it, it is annoying. It is annoying. So there's really three ways of dealing with that, all right? One of which is just a simple, you can't worry about it. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, you're making them play a weaker hero. You just need to move on. Don't sweat it. The sec or swap, right? The second yeah. thing is to remind yourself that you are <laughs> psychologically superior. <laughs> um, if you're making them swap, especially if they swap to something that's easy or they swap to something that they don't really know how to play all that well. Like sometimes people swap Bastion or, or they'll swap whatever and they're like, I, they clearly don't know how to play. 
um, uh, then that should make you feel smart and powerful, if that makes sense. Uh, it's, it's annoying, but it should make you feel good, right? Yeah. The other thing, and this is the most important one, is you need to know how to play around your counters. And you need to know how to adjust and change what you're doing so that you can still find success. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's something I'm sure we'll put emphasis on. But honestly, those are the three things I'd recommend as best as you can. Is there anything else that bothers you with mentality? You said teammates, sometimes I just check stats and people are trolling. Like I said, it happens. Both teams focus on yourself, focus on what you're doing. You talked about counter swapping. Anything else come to mind? No, not really. But also, you know what's ironic? Yes. The, literally yesterday, I I was literally playing Winston on Drunker Town, right? Yeah. And their team swapped Roadhog, bashing the Reaper. The there you go. Thing. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's actually insane. There you go. Perfect timing there. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's obnoxious. Okay. Uh, also, the ability to apply knowledge to game is a problem. I notice when I grind for long periods of time, I feel like I start to autopilot if I'm on a winning streak. Well, there's your solution. Don't necessarily grind for long periods of time. What What do you do instead? Just cut down on the time, I guess. Sure. Or take a break even, right? Just even just like walk just before you get into queue or even when you're in queue for the next game, get up, walk around, slap yourself around the face, touch some grass, check the mail, right? <laughs> Move. Build in that mental alertness again. I feel like I struggle when my supports go low heels and I can't create the space that I need. Okay. Also, I'm confused about how to play slower with my teammates at times, uh, but not too slow so that I'm playing passive. I'm unsure how to resolve my problems while in game. Also feel like my skills decline due to me smurfing a lot because I want to play with my friends. We don't have to wide match. The last thing is how to create space at a higher level of play. Okay, so we'll look at a lot of this stuff in game. But yeah, that is definitely going to be a problem that you're going to have to resolve is when you're playing at a lower level, you are playing at a lower level. You're building bad habits. Um, now, you said that you really enjoy playing with your friends. I also really enjoy playing with my friends. But I'm not trying to hit the Grandmaster. You are. So you have to try and solve what's more important to me, me playing with my friends or me ranking up. Because one is a social goal, one is a personal goal. Both are good, both are great, both can be, but you have to find out which one is most important to you right now. Does that make sense? Now, just remember we said we don't have to be like all or nothing. You could be like, well, I'm gonna solo queue one day or something like that, but you, you do have to keep in mind that it will affect your ability to rank up. Make sense? Understand. Okay. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. Last thing I will say is that you just have a little bit of, um, a little bit low on the sleep end. So just keep that in mind. So six hours of sleep isn't bad, could be better. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. I know that that could be an issue with a lot of people. I've struggled with it for a long time, but it is a priority with your ability to learn things, the ability to focus, and honestly, your ability to deal with tilt and mentality as well. Very, very important. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get into the review. You down to go? Yeah. I have like one very good example of like me autopilot. Perfect. Let's do it. And for the most part, I was like flexing around. Okay. It's just the X is not capital. That's fine. All right, let's take a look here. Now the question here is what do you play? Because I see... I think I play Malco. You start D.Va, and then you go Ram. Then you go Malga. I think the end I go Zarya. Okay. And then you Zarya. Yeah. So here's the bad news, because this might be a good representation of what you're doing psychologically. Like maybe you're autopiloting here. We can definitely look at the Ramatra. But frankly, what's the value of looking at Malga if your hero pool is Doomfist Queen Ramatra? You get what I'm saying? We could look at the Ramatra part if you'd like to. Does that work for you? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any other codes? 
I do. I have like four more. Perfect. We'll skim through those. But I can already see, like right now, it's five tanks in one game. It's a lot of practice split up. And the funny thing is, is what about the situation made you want to go Ram? Look at their comp. What about their comp says Ramatra is good? Honestly, I think I was auto playing so bad. I was just focused, like hard focusing the tank and just counter swap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now Ram's not too bad versus this. Ram is okay versus their comp. But yeah, if you're playing too much, like, but Diva's pretty good versus their comp as well. And the irony is that this this point is really good as well for with verticality. So Diva might even be better here. Now I probably would go with something like a Ramatra or a Junker Queen on third point because it's real flat. But Diva might be better here. So you actually swapped off of the arguably better tank for the situation because you were thinking about Ryan. And then if you go to your attack here, like this is where you play Malga. Again, yeah. you're thinking tank, 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 tank. But I look at what they're playing right now. I do not want to play Malga into that. Use Torbjorn on a Sojourn. Misery. Absolute misery. What would be a better tank into this? Probably just, what, yeah, D.Va again, maybe. Or... Flat map, not that good. Choose one of the three. Choose one of the three, remember? Doomfist, Queen, or Ram. Probably, yeah, just Ram, then. Probably Ram, yeah. Probably Ram would be the better choice than Malga here right uh first point attack probably doom honestly darts a little bit tough but like doom is pretty good versus uh venture to doom's okay versus torb doom's okay versus ryan you have the verticality you could stay on doomfist through second point uh, and then let's see what do they ended up going to on third defense here but yeah i mean i i think that's 100 percent the play so look at the map look at the situation and really just look at what you want to play so Ram, Ram, Ram. You said that you're focusing tank a little too much. So you at least have an idea of what you should be doing. What is Ramatra's strengths? What are When you're playing Ramatra, what should you be focusing on? What does Ram do good or better at compared to other tanks? That, um, I guess it's, I don't know how to describe it, but like his, it's like his somewhat flexibility and his punches that can go through shields. Sure, sure, sure. I think what it makes Ram great is like your ability to kind of poke stuff out. But then if you see opportunities to just quote unquote dive, right? With your vortex and your shield and, and really importantly, your nemesis punches, you could do that. You can punch through shields, but you can also just punch people in the face, <laughs> right? So, okay, let's take a look here. So first things first, what do you think about your positioning here? Probably swinging too wide out. Even on my shields right there, I probably should play more left to the bus, I guess. Okay, so a little bit closer to cover. Are you are you creating or maybe looking for opportunities to push backline from this position? Can you? I Let's could see. if I, I guess, vortex. Like sure, where the... you could. You don't have to right now, but there's a threat of that. That's the key thing. When you're playing Ramatra, you don't have to go for backline all the time. For example, you haven't seen Nate, right? No sleep dart. They're not low. So I probably wouldn't go right now. But there's a, you could maybe. So if you see an opportunity. Like, that's all you want with Ramatra. You want a good close corner and the threat of pushing backline. But yeah, I agree. Good vortex. The shield is also pretty good as well. But the problem goes back to your corner. Do you see that? Everything is great here, except for where... You are here. Where should you be here instead? I guess where I said it. Probably yeah. a little farther back. Yeah, Maybe even a little farther back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Good. Good vortex. I like the cover usage here. Is good shield. Good shield. And I like the attention here too. Right, you shoot the shield. And then you see an opportunity to shoot squishy and you lock right in the squishy. This is really good. What's the only problem with what you're doing right now? Again, another micro error. Where should you be? Just farther back. Not necessarily farther back, but farther here. Oh. Right? Again, it's just cover. Why is this so important? Why is this cover so important? So, not everyone on their team is shooting at me. 
especially yes. the the turret because yes. fun DPS passive. Yes, yes. And you ready for something even spicier? You probably didn't even think about. How do you get close to Ana from your position now or the position on the corner? Could um, maybe wrap around in the building to the right. Yeah, and, and maybe not even wrapping around the middle. Just if you sit here, how does the Ana peek you? She has to get close. So you get close, you kill her. If you play in the open, you let Torb and Ana poke you out without getting close. Don't let them do that. If your cover usage is good, you reduce the amount of damage that you take Plus, you force people to get close to you. And that's exactly what you want them to do. Do you see that? See, now look at how far away these guys are. You should be here. You should be here. This Ana should be terrified of you. But no, you've, you've just standing in the open. Do you see the difference there? Yeah. The small difference, but it's an important difference. I, I think overall, in terms of your cooldown usage, your target priority, I actually don't think it was too bad. I think, like you said, you're focusing too much on the tank in terms of which tank you're picking. But in terms of what you're doing right now, I think it's all right. Vortex is okay. Shield is okay. Would probably wait a little bit longer before you Nemesis form, just because you were pretty close to full. Yeah, I, I think you just keep shooting here, right? Just keep shooting. Um, Pretty sure the Ryan dies here. Oh no, thank you. I get oh my gosh. Yeah, so you miss your vortex there, which kind of sucks. But I think you guys are okay. You get slapped, but it's not the end of the world. I think you guys should still win this fight. The goal with ults is to win the fight. Little too much attention on the Rhine there for sure. Do you notice the attention on Rhine here? Yeah. This guy's right here. This guy should have died. Vortex is good though. Nemesis form is good. Shield is good. Vortex is good. Just a little bit too far from cover again. So so when you're here, where should you be positioned? Tricky, right? I think there's two or three options. What do you think? Maybe like... Yeah, this is hard. My guess is like the other side of the payload. Sure. Like, yes. sure. Honestly, even just being here would be fine. Because at least you have some cover. It's not optimal, but at least it's some cover. Alternatively, you could back to this corner just, here. Yeah. Or you could back to this corner here. But really, honestly, it just as long even payload would be better than where you are right now because right now you're just you're just floating, and what happens now is you can't avoid pen because of this. You see that? So it's really two fights in a row where your cover usage has been a major, major, major problem. Major problem. You see that? Do you have any questions so far? everything's making sense okay it's just it's, the main takeaway it sounds like it's just use more cover just we've only looked at two fights yes but it's just the cover usage is hurting your ability to actually push squishies as ram and it's also hurting your ability to survive and avoid damage uh let's let's look at another code here because we wanted to stay on uh queen doomfist ram this game we lost um, Got it. Let's uh, let's take a look here. So we're looking especially at your cover usage, a little bit at your target priority, but overall it wasn't too bad. Doom. Zarya, Zarya, Zarya. And it's like mostly Zarya, but and Queen. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny here because you might have won this round here, but Zarya is not very good on this second point. Why? Because the verticality. The verticality, right? I think Zarya is okay versus the Genji, maybe. he's. She but actually, their comp, like, I definitely think uh, Doom should be okay. I mean, look at. Besides the Hender, you don't really have anything that counters you. Uh, and honestly, even Junker Queen wouldn't be too bad here either. But yeah, okay, let's uh, 
Let's look at the let's look at the Doomfist stuff here. Th that worked for you? One. Yeah. So what is Doomfist good at? What are your priorities with Doomfist? Build power block and like look for an opportunity. Okay. Okay. What do you do in the meantime? You don't have like do you just wait for them to make a mistake? What do you do when there's nothing happening? Uh I guess like slam cycle. Sure. Sure. Oh, sure. Uh, uh, right here, it's like I, I, I'm not that great on this point. I'm starting to realize that. One thing I would be cautious about doing is I wouldn't necessarily be chasing here, right? Instead, you need to be thinking about your own engage. So, where could you set up from here? What distance are you most effective in as Doomfist? Close. Close. So how do you how do you get close? Preferably without using abilities. If you have to use an ability now, it's fine. But like, how do you get close? Probably play just to the right. Sure. Can slam in here. Punch in here. Hold this angle here. Disengage if you need to. The way to think about Doomfist is that you can use your abilities to go in and go out, but try to do so already from a close range off angle. Like, don't start here and then slam all the way in here. Instead, start here. Your goal with Doomfist is thinking, I want to get to a point with my positioning to where I'm just doing a lot of pressure and a lot of damage just by shooting without even using my abilities. Because once you could do that, now you know you're cooking. Like, let's say you're here. Can you do a lot of damage with your shotguns from this here? Yeah. Yes, you can. You could shoot Life Eaver. You could flank here and shoot the Moira. Heck, even the Diva here, a little bit of damage here as well. Because if you don't do that, this is when you have to, how would you engage the backline from this position here? From right here, probably just, I guess, punch in and slam out. Sure. Or try to kill something and then slam out. Sure. So when you punch in, is the enemy team going to be able to react easily, have time to react, have time to poke you out and so on from this position here? Yeah, for the most part, because my DPS are not, like, I guess, engaged on something. Right. In addition to that, where's the rest of your team? Are you splitting attention by engaging from here? No. My no. team is still focused on the tracer, I think, right. for the most part. So then let's say that you build power punch here, and instead of punching from here, you walk here, and you look for a power punch here, or if you even have time, look for a power punch here. What's the? What are the odds that this power punch gets poked out, hindered, or whatever else? A lot lower. A lot lower. Why? Because um, they, from this off angle, it's a lot harder to react because it's a much lot closer. It's much closer. In addition, if they do react, if the D.Va does booster here and the Cassie does throw hinder here, what are they now exposed to putting attention here? They're giving up the they're giving up main and also left. There's pressure from here, and then there's pressure from here. So even if they do stop you, it's inconvenient. And if anybody should know this, a console player should know this, right? Because that's one difference in PC and console is it is a lot harder to maneuver. So turning your crosshair to the left, ninety degrees, is harder. Abuse that. Because really, if that tracer is even a little bit better, she doesn't die. And and you know who does die? Your backline. Because the D.Va walks forward, the Castile walks forward, the Moira walks forward, and so on. There you go. I just whiff. That was but, bad. You, you, you whiffed? You whiffed. But at least you had the right idea. Yeah. Because you pulled Moira's attention. You pulled Eva's attention. You pulled Castile's attention. That's okay. The problem is all the time wasted up to that point. Nice. Good. This is a mistake. Why? 
Because um, I shouldn't I should be holding their team back. So, Why? especially because they're both her healers right there, so if she doesn't get healed, right. my team should be able to kill that. Right, 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 right. But there's an even more obvious answer. You ready for this one? Who's closer? It's also their supports that are much closer. The supports are closer. Take what's close. That's it. It's harder to land the punch. It's harder to get the follow up. Heck, you don't even need to punch here. You could just shoot. That would be good too. But yes, this is why going backwards is bad because you're a short range character. The further you reach, the less you do. So set up on short range off angles and use your cooldowns and your shotgun on what's available. And then if they put a lot of attention on you and you have to back out, that's fine. Otherwise you have problems. <laughs> that's kind of unfortunate, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, let's uh, okay, and there's the Zarya swap. Well, I, okay, here's the thing. <clears throat> Zarya will feel easier because it will counter their tank and it is a relatively flat map. But did you solve your Doomfist problem or did you just put it on a shelf for another day in this game? I just put it back in the shed, not to look right. at it. Exactly, exactly. Nothing about what they were doing was, oh, they were just going full cancer mode and Sombra sitting in her back line and uh, like... That you, you there was it was just you just didn't play you just weren't playing very well that's all that's all so instead of like trying to solve the problem or figure it out you just kind of gave up and went to the easier solution and and that's such a that's that's why you're still stuck in your rank that's why you're not grandmaster yet you have to be able to even when you're even when you're counter picking right don't just counter pick the tank think about the situation think about the map think about the dps the backline right that it whether it, it's improvement through counter picking or improvement through gameplay it takes work. It takes a little bit of effort and a little bit of thinking. And that's something that's not happening right now. It's just, oh, first thing I do is just kind of off the tank, you know. Because if you think about it, like, Zarya will be good versus their tank, but Zarya might struggle no. versus Lifeweaver. Like, you're going to, and you're also going to have a lot of hard times versus Tracer, too, even harder than Doomfist. Um, but yeah, okay. Any questions, or do you want to move on to the next code? Yeah, we'll just move on. You getting the next code? Yeah. Sounds good. Got it. <clears throat> okay. No questions? Ready for I'm trying to think of a question. Honestly. Sure. No problem. Ready I would say... So far, if we were to take a short list of notes, RAM mostly cover usage to avoid damage set up on squishies. And then with Doomfist, what would you say would be the what you need to be practicing with Doomfist from what we just talked about? What are some points? Yes, um, like taking the off angles mostly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mostly taking taking short off angles, right? Short angles. And not chasing targets far away if there's a good target close. Uh, bad news is uh, from this, I'm seeing this code, I'm seeing mostly just D.Va and Roadhog. So now we have Roadhog gameplay. <laughs> so do you have another code? I'm not, if not, you know, we can we can maybe make do, but. I have another one. Okay. I, I'm trying to, because there's a way to check what characters I play before you look at the code. I'm Got it, out. okay. Got it. This is, you know what's funny though? Is like, while we're not necessarily learning from the midtown code that you just gave me. We are learning that maybe part of the reason why you're struggling with improving. <laughs> it's just the hero pool. Yeah, like we're all over the place. You know, actually, 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 I, I'm going to go back to that midtown game because I want to know why you swapped the Roadhog. I want to know why. I want to see why. And we're going to judge whether that was a good decision or not. Okay. So let's look at the fight right before. Your versus Bastion, Doom, Iviari, Tracer. I think Diva's pretty good versus that. A decent amount of verticality. 
So you tell me, do you remember this game? Not fully. I think I counter swap because I just got anno annoyed there. I felt like I wasn't getting healed as much, but probably not. That's just... that's it. That's it right there. That's it. It's it was an emotional decision. It yeah. Was not, right. Right. Okay. That's the classic. Right. Like if you look at your comp, your comp can is not very easy to to heal. So you grade the quality of your swap. Look at the enemy team's comp. What do you think? Is Roadhog good versus this? Is Roadhog bad versus this? Is, is he okay? Is he better than Diva? It's not better than D.Va, but it just, it's, not, it's just hard counter charts to do them if I play sure, it right. Sure. I would say it's about the same. I think he's pretty good versus the Bastion. I think he's pretty good versus the Doom. He's all right versus Tracer and Moira as well. I don't think it's a bad swap, actually. But I don't think it's better than D.Va because the, at least this first half section of the map, you really wish you had boosters. You really wish you had boosters to take control of high grounds, right? So I would say I think the swap is fine in terms of the result, but you're lucky. I think like we you said, it was more, you're right. It was more of an emotional swap. Like you said, it was more of a, I'm frustrated. So I'm going to, I'm going to do something about that. And that is again, not conducive to learning. Even if it works in the moment, it's not a good long-term solution to actually fixing problems. Um, and actually here, I don't know what they start on, but I think Hog might actually even be a little bit hard versus what they're playing here. I mean, damage boosted Echo might be a little bit tricky. Um, let's see, do you end up swapping here? No, I, th I play Hog. I think throughout the game here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's uh, let's move on to the next code here. What one was this? W D. Which one was that? W D Busan. Okay. I think this game I mostly played Queen, but I think I start on Diva. Queen, Queen, they have a lever. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, they did. That's fine. That, 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 that's, that's fine. We, we might be able to get a few fights out. Okay. Oh, but you didn't start Queen. Oh, this is good. This is good. You started D.Va and then swapped Queen. Why? Honestly, I, I sometimes just default to D.Va for some reason. It's like very weird. Cause I, I just like, cause I do like playing D.Va, but it's just like, cause for mobility, I guess. Sure. That would be something to consider with your hero pool, right? Like if you do like playing D.Va, finding a way to fit her in, right? But, um, so why did you swap queen? To be honest, I just felt like playing queen. Sure, I was that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. If if the swap feels like I just kind of would have fun playing this character, that's that's fine. I think Queen is better here uh, because I think Diva was kind of bad just because of the way that they were fighting, like how close. Not a lot of verticality. Now, if the fight had migrated to point, Diva would have been fine, but you weren't fighting there. So let's uh, let's take a look and see how we play. Now, when you're playing Queen, I guess let's give a quick TLDR. Like, what are your priori priorities? What are you looking for? What does a character need to do? You tell me. But a like land knife, preferably sure, on the squishy, and then why? just combo why? Um, sure. Because it's easy to just follow up with the kill with sure. carnage. So you're thinking like execute kind of a way of approaching things, right? Setting up executes and so on. Okay. What about your shout? Shout can depending. I can use it to walk in, or if I really need to, preferably not, but to walk out if I need. If I'm sure. HP. So you're saying setting up executes, disengage if things get hot, engage if you see an opportunity. Is that correct? Yeah. So obviously goofy there. <laughs> great, great Gracie. Really nice knife there. But obviously you just rush the knife or the pull without like actually seeing if he was getting pulled, right? And honestly, even if he'd had gotten pulled, I think you would need to shout there to actually reach him with that carnage. Because he got his head caught on the ceiling, which is why he didn't get yeah. pulled. But he would have only been pulled to like here, which means he wouldn't have quite hit him. He probably would have shouted. Um, but yeah. Nice Gracie, though. And the reason why that's important is because Gracie is both, or uh, carnage, excuse me, is both an aggressive and a defensive tool. How so? Carnage is the axe, right? Yes. Obviously the aggressive value, but how is it also defensive value? Just from the the life's... Yes. Well, the bleed. 
Yes, exactly. But here's another way of looking at it. Why did the Ryan push? Because he saw me use both of my CDs. You see it? So because there's no carnage value, the Ryan pushes knowing that he doesn't need to be scared. You see, offensive cooldowns are defensive in the fact that because you have them, people give you respect. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So as soon as you waste your offensive cooldown, they will push you afterwards. That's why it's so important. I'd also be using my shout here as well. Um, but that's why it's so important that you don't just use your cooldowns randomly. Otherwise, you're going to be in serious trouble. So yeah, major issue there is you, you mess up your Gracie. You're a little bit late. Uh, mess up your Carnage, excuse me. And you're a little bit late with your shout. Okay, let's see. Good try with the, uh, the knife there. Cover, 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 cover. Oh yeah, he pieced these right there. <laughs> now let's say he didn't DC. How would you have broken this choke? This feels really bad, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, Why? It's the, sh it's the shield and double hit scan that's applying the pressure. Yes. So, so if you want to talk about tank counters here, Ryan is a soft counter to Queen. Why? Because he can deny most of her value with um, yeah. no with shots, the, no Gracie, yeah. no bleed. He shatters you. He, even then, in the one v one, it's pretty rough, right? So, what's your solution here? Because I'm going to be honest with you, if the soldier doesn't DC, you don't you don't break this choke. Yeah. So, what's the solution? If you're not allowed to swap, what do you do? Yeah. Probably, I guess, take the fight to point because it's harder right here. But even then, they probably the hit skins will stay on height. Right. It's tough, though. But you, but you know what? I You're thinking about it the right way. Keep thinking. Okay. Or just take the fight left and walk on them. Like here? Yeah, here. It's probably just... a better option, right? You could go from here to here to here. To here, using cover, right? See what they do. Maybe you can bait point. If the Ryan goes point, then you take high ground, right? Yeah, you're thinking strategically now. You're thinking strategically, and you're thinking about using your kit because now you've got a Gracie. Maybe you use Shout to close the distance. Maybe you see what the Reinhardt does. But yes, you, this is you bashing your head into the wall over and over again and, and, and not learning anything. But your suggestion there is hard. It's not an easy solution. It may not even be a good solution. Maybe there is no good solution for Busan, for Juan, Darker Queen. But it's it's definitely better than what you're doing right now. That's good. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we talk what about what you... You need to, what you need to be doing better is you need to be, when you're confronted with problems like this, don't turn off your brain and definitely don't turn off your brain and go back to spawn room. Instead, think about it with the character that I'm playing right now. What can I do? How can I adjust? How can I counterplay? How can I rotate and practice that? Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Obviously easy when you get to squishies. Let's watch one fight. I know they're um, down one, but I want to watch one fight here. They, they pop all four olds, I think, right here. Yeah. I think. Same thing as the ram, just be super disciplined with your cover usage. Just look at your HP here. Watch this. You're like, oh, carnage. Wham! And you're like, oh, my days. And that is with a man down, too. So be very careful, right? Be very careful. But it's just sometimes unexpected. It just happens real fast. Yes. The and burst damage is unexpected, but prevention versus the burst damage by being super close to cover is something you can always prepare for. For example, if you're if you're closer with this carnage here, or maybe even let him walk out of the choke into your team, and you carnage, instead of here, you let him come into the choke, I guarantee you take at least 100, 150 less damage. Right? Yeah. 100%. Okay. But yeah, I, I understand. Sometimes it can be hard to read. Good patience. Nice, Gracie. Your knives are looking good. Bastion ult. Okay, let, let's see this. Let's see this. Okay. 
Need a specific target in mind for that ult, right? Or that, uh, that, that, wait, wait, did you use ult here? Oh, no, you got your ult cancelled. Yeah. Oh! By, by the shatter. I think I it gets cancelled by the shatter. Yes, I think so. Oh, it definitely does. Definitely does. Okay, that's that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Obviously, again, the solution... I know you're jumping into the ultimate, but expect the ultimate. Shatters... Like, your free value with shatters, so just be careful. Um, but that, but that's mostly it. Okay, let's see. Let's see your retake here. Oh, you guys just straight up win this. All right, let's see what you do. Good. It's okay to focus tank if he's low. Mechanics are good. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to say here. Okay, so we've only had a little bit of JQ, but what did you see with your JQ? What needs to be improved? And we saw something globally about you as a player too. Just be more disciplined with my abilities. Discipline with abilities. Have a clean purpose. And, I, and in general, just have like a specific target in mind. Sure. And then in general, when confronted <laughs> with a problem, difficulty with map, comp, situation, do not smash head into the wall. <laughs> Or two, go to spawn room and randomly swap. Instead, what do you do? Just figure out a countermeasure for their counter for their measure, play. Strategize first. Build that skill. And if you do swap. What are you swapping around? What do you think? Think enemy tank, obviously, right? But the also, map. what else? The map, map and their pop. And enemy DPS supports as well. I think tanks have more counter ability, right? You look at, like, what does Lucio counter? does pretty well versus Winston's and Divas and Doomfist and he can he can definitely deny Ryan and Junker Queen value as well but it doesn't feel as oppressive as like playing Winston into a Roadhog right but you do need to consider those heroes okay you got another code <laughs> yeah all right let's do it this has been the popcorn review a little bit of everything yeah ready for battle Ram do we stay ram? No. Nope. <laughs> hog. Hog. Do you swap one more? No, you stay hog. No. Okay. So up 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 to the point that you swap hog. I want you to tell me, do you remember this game? If so, why do you swap hog? Just for, I think again for the doom. But yeah. this hog the question probably needs to be asked, is hog good into this call and the and or the map? What do you think? It's, I think it's all right, but not against their team. But with the map, it's okay. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think it's okay versus uh, everything, but the Sombra Zen could be problematic, honestly. Yeah. But I think Hog is, oh, Hog's not worse than Ram. Let's put it that way. I think Hog is fine. But yeah, I think like looking at the characters that you talked about, Ram, Queen, Doom, probably wouldn't want to play Doomfist into this. Queen may be okay. Ram or Queen, you know? But like, listen again. It's like another one of those swaps where like it's it's like an emotional swap, and you really didn't improve your situation all that much, right? So, and then you also lost your ultimate. So let's let's take a look here. So we've already seen at least in Lumbani that cover usage was a little bit of an issue. So let's see if that's an issue or if there's anything else to learn here, because this is obviously a very different situation. I like the idea behind the abilities. I just don't like that you didn't use them. Do you see what I'm saying? You threw yeah. down your shield, you threw your vortex, and then walked away. What should you have done with these abilities, right? Probably 
like play closer to corner and like ignore the Doomfist and pressure their Zen and more. You got it. You got it. I would have liked you as well to like actually aim the vortex where you wanted it to. Like, don't just throw it. Throw down the shield here. Shoot, turn the corner, and like actually throw that sucker where you want it. You know, throw it on the Moira. Throw it at the Zen. You just kind of like threw it, right? Yeah, I think I stuff. couldn't see the Moira Zen. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. But it's because you didn't look, right? So yeah. somehow you're simultaneously too far from cover and yet also not doing enough damage at the same time, <laughs> right? It's like the worst of both worlds here. Hug the corner exactly like you said and like beat these guys up. Cover, 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 cover. Good. Good. See, now you're actually using your abilities. That's, that's good, that's good. Don't go backwards, hold the corner. Just hold the corner. Ah, you see it, you see it, you see it, you see it, right? It's the same thing you did with Doomfist on Oasis, remember that? He's too far yeah. away. He's too far away. Like maybe you suck him with your vortex here and maybe he dies, but look at what's walking for like, oh my god, my, my days. Like you need to make sure that at the very least, throw a vortex on this guy so that he has to duck behind the corner and then that cuts off all the damage. Like that guy, like you cannot let him do what he wants. Like look at that. all that work and he just walks away. All that work and he just walks away. And now you're far away from the Zenyatta. Nice. Nice, that was good. But that should have been done literally five, six seconds ago, right? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like the Doomfist where you tendency to kind of go backwards rather than hold your ground. Still a little bit of cover usage and then a little bit more intention with your abilities, right? Okay, let's keep going here. Oh, that's unfortunate. Tracer got spawn camped. You see it again, right? Yeah. You see it again. You got to hold the ground here. Because the thing is, is with, when you go back, it's not just like, oh, you let them do whatever they want. You are very vulnerable to Zenyatta right now. Watch. You see it? Because you're not thinking about Zenyatta right now. So can the Zenyatta shoot you? Yes, he absolutely can. Right? So there'll be times when you go backwards and you get shot in the butt cheeks. Right? It's not good. Does that make sense, what I'm talking about specifically? Yeah. Just like giving up the, just the, just yeah. giving up the, I'm trying to think of a word. The choke really is what it is. Yeah. Is giving up a corner to go backwards into the open, get shot in the back, ruin your chance of trading backlines. And even if you don't trade backlines, at least you control backline and cut off the follow-up from the Doomfist while also making the enemy team farther away from you, which is really bad with the ramp. Good Vortex, shield needs to be used. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, this this fight was just whatever, EMP pulse so while I'm GG's, but okay. So going back to our ram, would you add anything? Definitely cover usage could be improved a little bit. Would you add anything with ram as well? Points of practice. Just, I guess, target priority and target just priority. focusing whoever is like closest. I, on what's closest don't focus too hard on peeling back hold the corner disengage and and move from corner to corner be intentional finally be intentional with your abilities because I, th I think your abilities were okay i don't think they were a weakness they're like they're, they're, they were pretty good but i think you could be a little bit better with them okay any questions talked about like a lot of little different things yeah it's really, like, I'm not even sure, but it's like very annoying when like stuff like that happens, like tiny little mistakes that I feel like I can fix, but I'm, or that I know, but I don't know the solution to. Well, okay. The thing is, is you know, <laughs> you know what the mistake is, right? So now all you have to do is put effort and intention behind you practicing it and build better habits as a result, right? Like, you're not special. Everybody knows things and, and that they forget to do. Everybody. I do. Like, why am I not literally the best player in Overwatch on all heroes and all roles, right? People are like, oh, it's because your mechanics are not that good. But if you've seen me play, I'm like masters in all roles. And I, I make a lot of mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. Stuff that I know to do better. Why? Because I don't have the habit of making that decision quickly. I can look at it in VOD and be like, oh, I shouldn't have been there. But in the moment, it's really hard to do that. So you need to go into games 
You need to practice over and over and over and over and over again, thinking about corner, 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 corner with Ram. You know, don't chase, don't chase, don't chase. Jungle Queen, Jungle Queen. You know, making sure that I'm actually having a purpose. Strategize. How do I do? Doomfist. Take short off angles, right? Build habits. Improve your habits over and over and over again. Go into every ranked game with some one of these things, that big list there, one of those things to practice, that ranked game. Even if you mess up your other stuff, even if you don't play that good, even if you lose, practice one of those things over and over again until you could do it almost without thinking. Because there's a lot of things that you do right now without thinking, right? Like you're your you're master's player, right? There's a lot of things that you're doing well. It's the things that you that are not quite habits yet. That's what you need to practice. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Or do you want clarification on that? <laughs> or like, I, mean, I don't think either of my question is like, is there like a way to play slower with like less resources from your supports, like lower heels? Sure. Like for example, Say, like, my team is, like, running Mercy Iliari. Yeah. And I'm only queen or something. Super disciplined cover usage. Super disciplined in. Super disciplined out. Lower healing resources just means that you're more punished for sloppy gameplay. Does that make sense? That yeah. being said, if you play super disciplined with cover, Mercy Iliari has insane utility. It means your DPS are going to be... You're essentially, when you're playing Mercy Iliari, here's what it is. You're basically playing with three dps one of those dps is a super dps because it's damage boosted you're playing with iliari another dps and then another dps that's getting damage boost so you don't need to be demand if you're demanding healing all the time then you're not letting your iliari do what she wants to do you're not letting the mercy do what she wants to do so you need to be really disciplined with your cover usage really disciplined with your cooldown usage and you're going to win easily if you don't, then your Mercy and Iliar are going to have to dump healing into you, and then now you're not playing to your strengths at all. Does that make sense? Yeah. Same right. thing with Lucio Zen. Like, if you were to play, like, Ramatra with Lucio Zen, it'd feel kind of annoying, feel kind of bad, but the enemy, Luc your Lucio would be able to do so much damage, play so aggressively, and you would have, the enemy tank would be perma-discorded and spammed. So you wouldn't need that much healing if you were smart with it. Uh, now, I'm not going to lie to you and say there are certain tanks that do like having more healing, but yeah, it, it, the way to play with low resource tank uh, heals is just to be very disciplined with your when you're going in and your cover usage. And if you could do those two things and be decisive, you, you should be okay. And remember, the answer to all these questions is generally, if you're not sure, go back in the replay viewer. I know it can be a little awkward in console, but go back and look in the replay viewer and take a look and be like, okay, could I position better? Could I have approached this fight better? And so on. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Mm, no. Okay. Cheers. Keep me updated with your practice, all right? <laughs>